welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. And we are back doing one of our Hallmark stars ranking videos. And we have so much fun doing these. It's kind of a crazy thing we do where we invite the star and hear all the behind the scenes details of these fun films. And we get to rank their movies while they're here with us. So it's, it's great. And I'm film critic Rachel Wagner and Jax is here. Hello, and as everyone knows, I am a big Busby. Yes. yes. Big Busby. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So today, our ranking, we have Cindy Busby here. We are ranking her films, seven of her films for Hallmark. And Cindy, thank you so much for coming on doing this. Oh my gosh, I was super stoked. I think this is a lot of fun. I'm, I'm excited to see what the results are. This is yeah. very, and also I've been really excited to see what people are saying on Twitter too, after you, you posted, like to hear people's answers has been really fun. So I love this. The Twitter response was a tsunami. It was <laughs> insane. <laughs> I've got so much response. It was great. Yeah. yeah. And we have a soft spot in our heart for Cindy uh, on the podcast because you were one of the first celebrities, Hall Stars, everyone's, that came on our show way back when we were just starting. I think at the very beginning of 2018, we started in, two, we had the 2017 season, but uh, Paul Campbell was our first and I think you were our, our second or third. So I, well, yeah. if I can follow in Paul Campbell's shoes, that makes me very happy. I think he's the best. So yeah, that's awesome. Was yeah. that that long ago? I feel like that was yesterday somehow. Oh, <laughs> and yet, so true. Yeah. 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 I think it was you. And then, Je I mean, I think it was Paul and the Jesse Hutch and then you, uh -huh. I think those were the first three uh -huh. that we had. Amazing. So you're an early supporter and we appreciate um, that. I mean, I love watching, you know, people do something really exciting about something I'm really excited about. And, you know, we're all sharing yeah. a passion here, which is Hallmark movies. Um, so yeah, it's great. Yeah. You guys are awesome. So uh, I'm, I'm stoked to see what you guys have to say yeah. today. Well, it's going to be fun. So you have done roles where you had, you've done films where you had a smaller role yeah. like the Haley Deans, for instance. Yep. And uh, so we decided to pick seven of your leading roles to mm -hmm. do. And uh, and it, we were surprised that you only have one out of these seven, one Christmas movie on Hallmark. I know, <laughs> Rachel, I know. And you know what? I, I think about it every single day. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Cindy, you know, you know, I joked around with you before and Rachel and I were joking around before you got on. I was like, at Hallmark, you start every season except for Christmas with Cindy Busby. And it's like multiple films in that season. Yes. So we, we get, we always want more Busby, but it's like, it's like, they're like, okay, we've got to put her in every season. And then by the time we get to Christmas, it's like, I guess we've done. Yeah, we're like kind of busy busy. Busy. <laughs> like we don't need her anymore, which is funny because we Christmas always need you. It's really my favorite time of the year. Like if I can just like blow up Christmas in my house all year round, I would. But you know what? Yeah. It's okay because we got a lot of other amazing movies yes. and uh, you know, it's only so a home, a Hallmark Channel. We need to fix this. <laughs> we all agree. Okay, let's do it. We're on the same page here. Yeah. We're all in good company. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, we were saying to off air, Jack Snyd, that this was a pretty tough ranking, like, because you like different movies for different reasons. And yes. it was, it was challenging. You agree, Jax? That's, that's why when you guys sent me the list, I was like, well, wait, what is this based on? And then you were like, <laughs> you know, Cindy, like, you don't need to answer. And I was like, okay. <laughs> yes, I don't want to. There's too many like reasons why you love things, but yeah. One must make a decision, and I'm happy it's both yeah. of you. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Jax, you struggled like I did. Oh, I struggled hard, normally because, and I see this as someone who's an actor myself, like I've done things where even if like the team that you work on it was, was great, you're like, well, that turned out and that was a doozy. And you know it, <laughs> and you're fine with it, and everyone who worked on it is fine with it, but with, with your Cindy, not only do I genuinely 
really, really like all these films we're reviewing. I like them for different reasons. And Rachel and I talked about this before. It's also when you have a franchise or when you, it, the things start, all the moving parts just start to, yeah. when you're actually like, well, which one do I like better? So this actually did feel like it required quite a bit of mental gymnastics. <laughs> Well, thank you for uh, for doing that. Uh, <laughs> Get right. quite to work out here. <laughs> well, let's dive in to the ranking. The first, uh, so well, the last number seven for me. I'll start. Okay. Uh, is was marrying Mr. Darcy. Okay, and <laughs> I like certain parts about this. I like. Uh, you and Ryan obviously are great. And I like Tammy. She's always fun to see in these and the puppies adorable. Uh, I, I just, I didn't really like that your character kind of gets very, very upset <laughs> at a certain point. And, uh, and then got two weddings. <laughs> she doesn't deserve two weddings that bit that she just threw so that was my kind of like uh, I didn't really love the way the story went there uh but I but I still think it was uh, a sweet uh little movie in many ways mm -hmm. yeah what about you Jax oh I'm chuckling so much because I can't wait to continue to talk about all of these things because that's <laughs> later on for me <laughs> um okay. my uh my number seven and this I really really struggled with putting this at seven and I'll say why was God wink because Cindy your performance in that even before I saw it, Bill Abbott was like this is the performance of a lifetime and then I saw it and I was like this is the performance of a lifetime um it gutted me I thought it was a beautiful performance a beautiful movie but it emotionally really took it out of me to the point where when I look at the list and I say, what would I watch again? I wouldn't, I don't know if I'd watch it again other than the fact that the monologue where you tell like your mom, uh, I don't I don't know if I don't want to do any spoiler. Well, we can spoil it. Yes, yeah. when, you, when you talk about it. If you haven't okay. seen it yet, you're missing it. <laughs> yeah, you guys shouldn't be here and you haven't seen it. Um, but no, please listen anyway. But yeah, that that is just a master class in acting. But I don't, it's not one I'm going to pop on to give me all the feel goods. Love Kathy Lee. Um, think it's really well written. Think it's inspiring, but probably not going to pop it on again, which is why it was my number seven. What do you think about those picks? I... I totally, I totally get where both of you are coming from. And I, you know, it's interesting. And I, I'm going to say this because I've never really had an opportunity to say it. I feel like marrying Mr. Darcy, like I, I felt like it was such a gift that we even made a second one. Like it was one of those where like, it was never planned. It was truly because like all the fans loved it. And I was like, oh my gosh, how did this happen? And I get to reunite with all these people I loved so much. And I love the story and I love the making of it, but I feel like um, my character got so much flack for what she did in the story, like you said, Rachel, of, you know, kind of throwing a quote unquote fit and like not being happy. But I'm also like, hey, guess what? Donovan Darcy was also not very nice in that movie. He was not giving her the attention. And it's interesting how we like our perspective goes to, and obviously it's the leading lady. So you're going to put your perspective on like what she was going through. But I feel like if any of us had gone through something like that, we probably would have felt the same. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's about, it's a fair point. I mean, and, and, and planning weddings is very stressful, let alone oh, one that's in the spotlight. <laughs> And everything like that, but I, I I think they should have just ended it with her having one wedding. Yeah, one I guess but, you know when you're marrying like someone extremely rich, you can have two men. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, what was that like filming those weddings? That must have been fun. It was so fun. I mean, yeah. I I personally am more of 
the second wedding kind of, or the first wedding, I guess, the one, mm-hmm. the, the slimmer, the smaller. Wedding, the smaller wedding type bride. So I really enjoyed that wedding because I was like, okay, this is more kind of my vibe. Um, but it's fun because I get to, you know, play make believe and I get to have all the different types of weddings I could ever imagine and not have to worry about doing them in real life. So that's really nice. (laughs) And also the huge church that we shot in is such a stunning church in Vancouver. I had never been in it before. And so that was the first time. And so, yeah, it was really, it was really fun. And to get to wear two dresses and and Mm -hmm. everyone getting to dress up twice uh, for a movie is always really great. I think I tried on like like 20 some odd dresses like it was a lot Mm -hmm. oh my yeah you love shooting with Frances Fisher she's super fun (laughs) I am obsessed with her like truly truly one of the sweetest people like she plays mean so well but she is honestly one of the sweetest people she is hilarious like so funny just totally up my alley as far as like humor goes and uh and just like a normal human who's just had like incredible success. And I just really look up to people who are able to maintain a level head and still yeah. be who they are, which is, which is really cool. And I, I must admit, that's not the case for everyone. I won't name names, but I can, I can assure you that's not the case for everyone. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she's on Titanic. I mean, come on. No big that's deal. incredible. Yeah. <laughs> And was like married to or with Clint Eastwood at some point. So, you know, yeah. like, okay, fine. <laughs> so yeah, she yes. was really cool. Yeah. And I love Tammy. Like she became a really close friend of mine through those movies as well. So yeah, she's great. We, she was also a very early uh, interview on our podcast. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yes. Very good. All right. And so Jax, what is your number six? Okay, so my number six, and this will be very surprising to anyone who knows about my love of Jack Wagner as well, but my number six is my boyfriend's back wedding, March 5. And also, I, I Tyler Hines, you guys have good chemistry. I'm yeah. obsessed with Jack Wagner. It, Josie's great too, but this was, this was an offline conversation Rachel and I had before this. Yeah. To me, this series of movies feels more like I want it to be an ongoing TV series with Josie and Jack as the leads. And then you, y'all you come in and you guys do, you know, the, you're the, the big guest stars for that week. As a franchise of movies, it's not that it doesn't hmm. work, but it doesn't go deep enough to me. Whereas a series it's like, oh, I feel like I want more of them. I want more Tyler and Cindy, but it doesn't mean I want less Jack and Josie, but there's a lot going on, but I like everything that's going on, but I'm going to pack it in. So I really do think it would be cool. What, what if we could make it a, you know, 10 episode series where they're running the in, but I just feel like this is, this is sort of how I feel about all the Wedding March movies. I like them. It just doesn't give me everything I need. It feels like there's not enough time. So that's why for me, a clock sent at six. But I like you and Tyler together a whole heck of a lot. Also, you're both very cool, real people. And that shows on screen and off. Uh, yeah, I, I love Tyler. He's, he's amazing. Really, really great time. Yeah, we, we joke on the podcast that we, we need to have a... Tyler Hines movie where they just pick somebody off of the street and say you're in a Tyler Hines movie because he has chemistry with everybody. <laughs> Congratulations, you're in a Tyler Hines movie. Or he's just a really good actor. Great chemistry. <laughs> yeah, he's amazing. Yeah. So, uh, well, my number six is Love in the Forecast, and you heard in the Christopher Russell uh, interview ranking uh, that I I enjoy this movie. I really do. I I was really grateful for it. It came out when we really needed some of a boost <laughs> last June. We needed a yeah. Hallmark movie and it came out and it was cute. And I like the whole kind of rain aesthetic. <laughs> we've never, yeah. we've seen lots of like fall and summer and we've never seen a rain movie. So why not? It's cute. Yeah. And I, I also, 
I, you know, I like you and Christopher. I also love Donna. She's one of my favorites. Uh, and uh, also, you know, Nelson Wong being in it was, was always fun. He's great. Uh, I, I do think the whole, like, should we, <laughs> should we use science in predicting the weather or nature is a little bit, I mean, I, I want my weather person to use science. <laughs> yeah. I, I think that, or, or uh, that that's a good that's way to go. So unpredictable. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> right. Uh, so I enjoyed it, but it is my number six. So uh, what what do you think about making, uh, when you were making Love in the Forecast, obviously that was pre-pandemic, but uh, yeah, what was the whole experience like with all the rain? I mean, honestly, it was my first time ever making a movie with Christy Wool Wolf. Um, which was so fun. I like immediately, we were very, very connected, very like she's, I consider her a very good friend of mine now. Like we get along, we still text, like she's a, just a good human. And I really enjoy her directing style. Um, and I really, like I said, love Christopher Russell. I just think he's such a gem and, uh, I'm really grateful. I think he mentioned in his, in his as well that we had done a movie called A Puppy for Christmas where we played very different roles and um, and getting to reunite in that movie was was so fun. And like, he he's just, yeah, we just get along. Like we have a really good banter, which I also really loved about Tyler Hines and I, where it was just like, boom, 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 boom. Like it was really fun um, and I, I really relate to that kind of way of being on set. Like, I just want to have a good time, mm -hmm. no matter what the storyline might be. And, uh, but yeah, the rain towers, I mean, it's, rain towers are intense. And I don't know about the milky water thing that you were talking about in that <laughs> one, but I will say one of the reasons they use rain towers is because even though it is actually raining in real life, if it's not hard rain, it will never show up on camera. So that's why they have to have really big droplets um, by using the rain towers. Yeah. Which means we get soaked. Uh, <laughs> uh, which yeah, I heard that even if it is raining, they still will a lot of times use the fake rain because it doesn't look. Because it did, well, because you can't see it. And 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 again, when we were shooting a movie about rain, I think it rained like slightly one day. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was February, so it's very likely that it should rain much more often in Vancouver, which it didn't. Which, and I remember saying this at the beginning, I was like, we're making a movie about rain, there's not gonna be any. <laughs> and there wasn't, which was hilarious. Um, but yeah, I love Donna so much. Um, we did a movie together in The Killer Downstairs, um, which was before that. And so she played my best friend. So we had a really great connection from that movie and then getting to reunite again with, um, you know, Love in the Forecast was great, which uh, fun fact, the original movie of Love in the, uh, the original name of Love in the Forecast was called When It Rains It Pours, which I really like that title, but they changed it. Yeah, that's cute. You, know, you always want to have love in the title, of course. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, it was such a good experience and getting to, to work with the dog, Kevin. Mm. which I, anyone who followed my stories while I made that movie, I was always like making videos of Kevin and laughing at Chris Russell saying like how Kevin was my favorite co-star mm -hmm. <laughs> and then cutting to Chris, Chris Russell's face. And he'd be like, really Cindy, <laughs> really? <laughs> well, uh, yeah. I would wanted to have stolen that rainbow umbrella. From Wasn't there. that so nice? Yeah, it was really good. <laughs> I didn't keep it, but I did keep one of the rain jackets, which was. Oh, you did? Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, very good. Well, Jax, what is your number five? Okay. So I hope this is allowed because it's a woman's prog and it's changed her mind. And I know in the Christopher Russell rankings, what actually should be next is, as we've just been chatting about, love in the forecast. Yeah. But, uh, which would have seamlessly, you know, led us into this moment in time. But when I started ranking these and the mental gymnastics from earlier, <laughs> I realized that I liked Love in the Forecast slightly better than Chasing Waterfalls, which I ranked higher with Christopher. And now 
is going to come in at number five Whoa. for my Buzzbean movies. Um, I liked it a lot. I love the relationship that you have with his daughter in it. I thought Cassidy is the young lady who plays daughter. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, I really liked the ending. I, mean, I, I liked a lot of things about this movie so much so that I thought because I had watched it more recently at the time when we did the Christopher Russell rankings that I liked it better than Love in the Forecast. But upon more distance and further reflection, um, which I'll touch on when we get to where it is ranked in mine, I do like Chasing Waterfalls slightly less than I like Love in the Forecast. So I... Yeah, is that okay? If Rachel, yeah, that no, okay? I can support you in that because I think yeah. that in a way, I think that Chasing Waterfalls is more Christopher, I mean, is more uh, the the movie for Christopher Russell than, it's more, than, than Love in the Forecast. So if I was making a Christopher Russell ranking, I can see oh. having it higher just for that alone and describing it yeah i like that yeah yeah so i i support you in your choice plus plus rankings they're totally subjective and they don't matter most of my rankings no this is how my rankings be. change You're daily <laughs> but rachel this is why you are at the actual professional film critic because i like the way you're talking about that with the with that lens, because you saying that to me makes sense for me. Like, yeah. oh, I was viewing it through that lens. Because so he has a daughter and he's just more of the like focus, yeah. I would say in that movie compared to Love in the Forecast where he's just mm -hmm, mm -hmm. more of a pretty, pretty, pretty man from the country, you know, kind of yeah. <laughs> which is great. He's always country. in the country. <laughs> the, yeah, yeah. The, the, the pretty guy who people like to cook for. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, and not that I blame them. I th I probably would be making chicken pot pie for Christopher Russell if I had the chance. Well, why not? Yep. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Uh, so this movie, I mean, I do have it a little higher, but this movie, I love the whole idea of sort of this this secret waterfall and everything like that, and and it looked freezing but beautiful. So what was that like shooting these scenes for this movie? Wait, is that yours too, Rachel? No, I mine's know? higher, but. Okay. Uh, yeah. What was it like shooting? Um, first of all, I do, I, I, I forgot to say, I totally agree with you, Jax, about the Wedding March movies. Like I, I, do, I do agree that it would be really good as a series. And that way you could get more of Jack and Josie because they are the, the A storyline, but then sometimes the B storyline takes over in the movie. So I, I totally yeah. get where you're coming from. So back to Chasing Waterfalls. That water was so cold. I can't even tell you. <laughs> like I remember when we were doing um, ADR for th that part, um, when we're in the water, ADR is when you go into a studio and you record sound bites and lines um, uh, afterwards because we weren't clearly wearing a mic because we were in the water. And I remember they were like, okay, can you, um, you know, just say some things that you were saying when you were in the water. It's like, you, no, no, you don't want to know what we were saying when we were in the water. <laughs> It, it's not PG, okay? <laughs> we were like freezing. And I remember, and we had a water safety supervisor and, you know, making sure everything was safe as we were like crossing the water to get to our location. Because like Chris Russell said in his uh, rankings, we had to walk everywhere because all of our locations were very remote and we're like in the middle of nowhere half the time. And this, we had to like climb down into the actual waterfall water. There was like, you know, a... a a little like whatever you want to call it, a little water thingamajigger mm -hmm. and that's where we were and the rocks are slippery and we're like you know and the water is so cold and I remember the water safety supervisor said there's a rule they call the 110 one rule which is when you're in cold water like that you have one minute to catch your breath you have 10 minutes before um, you lose a function of your extremities. So your hands and your, and your legs and your feet, they start to freeze. And then you have one hour before you go into hypothermia, which I was like, this is really interesting. So we were never in the water more than 10 minutes, like mm -hmm. obviously. Um, and 
Yeah. So anyway, that was a very interesting uh, piece of information that yeah. I did not know yeah. about. <laughs> and I know like, these thoughts that in there, like I said, you'd be like, then you have one hour before whatever, and it was hypothermia. It's like, <laughs> oh, that, oh, cool. No big deal. Um, yeah. Yeah. You're uh, like, these better be quick takes. That's all. I just well, <laughs> that's the thing. And and because we're waiting for a drone to be ready and all that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. we're like in the water. We're like okay, is this drone coming anytime soon? Like, come on guys. <laughs> like, And you know, the drone is being finicky and then they're like, okay, we're going to do it again. And we're like, are you serious? <laughs> and then, um, and then I remember we just did one take where we actually dove into the water. And I got to tell you, when you put your head under really cold water, you like kind of black out. Like it's really, really interesting because all your blood flows to your major organs to protect them apparently um anyway it was all done super safely but it was just like one of those experiences where I'm like forever bonded to Chris Russell because he <laughs> throws our butts off in that one scene uh but it looked really beautiful and that's what matters <laughs> that's right <laughs> well my number five is God Wink Met for Love is, is number five and I actually, I thought that is probably your best acting that you've done in a Hallmark movie. I think that you were really convincing as somebody who has MS. And I I thought it made sense why you were calling off the relationship because it was a pretty fresh new relationship. And you, you know, you have this new super, what some people could see as a, as a burden, which it isn't a burden, but it, I think it could be seen that way in a new relationship. Mm-hmm. And so I thought all that worked. I, I liked the little scenes like in the hallways when you guys were sort of flirting a little bit. I thought that was cute. Mm-hmm. I We don't get enough like flirting in Hallmark movies mm-hmm. and I'm a fan. And then also <laughs> I, I liked, uh, I know some people didn't like the whole like using the cards kind of a thing or whatever, but uh, and sh- sharing the message. I thought that was cute. I dug it. I, I enjoyed it. All that stuff I liked. My I guess the reason why I have it at five is just because the God Winks as a series as a whole isn't my favorite. I feel like it has so much more potential because the, I feel like it's it's sort of for the faith-based audiences, but then they don't go all the way that to make it actually faith-based and make it actually you know, characters who are praying and, you know, different things that you would have in a faith-based film. Mm -hmm. And I say, go all the way. Like, don't just sort of half seize. We're going to kind of pretend to make something for a faith-based audience, but we're not actually going to make something for a faith-based audience. And what what would be the problem of having one movie every year that is for a faith-based audience? And Mm -hmm. I think that's fine. And so that's my frustration with the Godwing series is I just feel like it's trying to be sort of agnostic when it's called God Winks, it should be a little more faith centered. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, uh, yeah. It's so. It, did you talk to the about. actual person that you were playing? Uh, get uh, about her experience? Yeah, we did actually. Um, I kind of wish we could have talked to them um, like a little bit earlier in in the making of the movie, we actually only talked to them, I think it was the last week of shooting um, where Ben and I uh, and our producers, we were able to sit down and have a Skype um, conversation for about half an hour over lunchtime. And it was, it was so beautiful. And uh, uh, I, I feel like I could cry just talking about it right now, but they're just such a beautiful couple and you could just sense their love even today I mean they have a fully grown son you know they've been together for like 28 years or something like that um it just it's just a reminder that love is there are no bounds uh, you know it's it's unconditional and it's full acceptance and uh I just really was grateful to have met them and to portray in a theatrical way um you know their encounter and their love which is such a is was a real gift for me and and I I really love telling stories like that where Mm -hmm. I'm able to do it through my filter because I'll never be able to do it 100% justice but at least 
you know, bring something to life through my eyes and through my own experience as best as I could. And Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that movie definitely has a special place in my heart for sure. So how did you know how to portray the MS? I don't know what they're called, the tremors or uh, the symptoms. I mean, again, like I I did my research going into it. I was actually quite nervous, like to portray something that people, you know, are going through day to day and are finding about all the time. Um, So, you know, I watched a lot of interviews with people who um, have been diagnosed and are going through it. And the interesting about MS is, is kind of everybody's experience is very different. And Mm -hmm. so there's not just like one way of how people are, are affected by it. Um, so that's kind of interesting. And, and, and again, we didn't want to go like full spectrum on it. Like we didn't want to go too deep into it, but just show the aspects that um, can touch your life. And, mm-hmm. and uh, so yeah, I just did a lot of research, um, you know, reading up about it, watching interviews, watching how people are affected, and then just kind of used that and in my interpretation but yeah it's definitely something you want to you know do really respectfully and uh and take your time with and you know it's something we talked about I talked about with the director of course and and everything so um yeah hopefully Mm -hmm. I and and it seems that I did people were really happy with it and I I've gotten so much positive feedback from family members who've been affected and 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 stuff like that so that's that to me is is what makes it worthwhile when you can, you know, know that people are like, thank you for putting a spotlight on mm-hmm. something that isn't talked a lot about, you know? And, and so that's really, really great to know. Yeah, and we have a member of our team here who has MS, uh, Caroline, and I know she really appreciated it. So I think that was great. Yeah. Uh, all right. Oh, I just wanna say one thing about the way, um, cause now that we're full in and talking about it, I'm like, well, I'm going back to that movie again, how, how beautiful your portrayal was, but I thought that something that was really interesting about the way that the um, symptoms and then the diagnosis was unpacked was the fact that as a young and very healthy woman up until when things started to feel off, mm-hmm. the way that you portrayed how things started to feel a little strange was in this very normal, I'm gonna brush it off way because my life is happening. And I'm like, oh, this seems a little weird, but I'm sure it's fine. And I just thought that um, with MS affecting everyone so differently, one, just so important to bring awareness, but also um, I think as an actor, there's this dangerous temptation sometimes, especially when you know the journey that you're going on, you like play the ending and I, never felt like you did that. Like, I I mean, it was just, um, it was just so well done that I almost, even though I had known that the story was going somewhere like that, you were really just sort of trying to toss it off like we all do when we're like, okay, nothing's wrong, it's fine. So I just, it was, it was really a beautiful journey. And even though I say I don't want to watch again, I hope someday when I am in a more stable, um, place I can watch it again as a, when I'm when I'm ready to feel that much again for sure I shall revisit. hey we're feeling a lot of things every day yeah. we don't need to you know but um it is a very uplifting story yeah. um so there's that <laughs> yes that's tr- no that's true that's that's and that actually too when Rachel was saying about and Cindy you said you actually got to talk to the people knowing that there is a quote unquote happy ending is at least a great way to have it, you have a little bit more buoyancy in my heart. So thank you for that reminder. (laughs) We'd like to take a second from this episode of the podcast to celebrate our sponsor of this episode. And that is the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcast? Do you want an inside scoop into what happens on the podcast? Do you want early access to episodes and loads of cool perks? Now is the time to become a patron of Hallmarkies Podcast. By becoming a patron, you get to access our patron Facebook group. You can request episodes or even be a guest on the podcast. And most importantly, any patron can join our monthly movie watch-alongs with stars like Paul Campbell, Natalie Hall, and more. 
It's as low as $2 a month to join in and become a special part of the Hallmarkies family. Please consider, and we will love you forever. Go to patreon.com slash hallmarkies. That's patreon.com slash hallmarkies. Well, Jax, what is your number four? <laughs> Loving the forecast, baby. Uh, All right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, everything we've already all said, but that, um, as Rachel said, that came at, at a time when we really needed it. And also, it, Cindy, with the bubbly says we got to do all those fun lives with you guys. Yeah. And, I mean, you and Donna and, like, and Nelson and Doran, I mean, Christopher Russell, too, but, like, that is such a dream team all-star cast. Yeah. It was like, why aren't they in a sitcom together on oh, any yeah. any network <laughs> that will put you on? Like, that should be a dream team that we all just ride off into the sunset. So, yeah. Sign me up. I'm okay. so down. Yeah. Nelson, by the way, is such a, like, I know you mentioned it in Chris Russell's, but, like, he's such a dream. And he showed up when he was doing, like, the telegrams he would show up and he had like a, and Christy, the director like would give him full like openness. She's like, okay, just go and just say whatever. And he had a bunch of songs that he had created and like little like jingles that he had made going into it. So every time he did it, he would do like a different one until Christy was like, keep that one, that's the one or whatever. And he was just, and he just had so much fun with him, with it. And, and when I broke, up with him in the you know the scene where I'm like sorry like I'm not available like his heartbreak like I was just like dying I was like Nelson if anyone tries to break up with you you tell me and I'm gonna get him they cannot like his, he's just so cute <laughs> he's so talented I just I, I adore him yeah so fun we love him too I always want to call him Kenny because he plays Kenny in most movies but <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Amazing. Uh, all right well my number four is my boyfriend's back when he march five and if you listen to our spring uh second wave recap which is weird they, they called it that but that's what they called it anyway our recap i say in there because we were talking about the sixth one i say in there that the fifth one is my favorite and i'm not so i'm not just saying that because you are here it is my favorite of the wedding march movies <laughs> I think there's some really bonkers parts of this series, like the fact that Jack Wagner gave, that Mick gives Olivia a promise ring and he's like, what, he's 50? I mean, what, what is that? <laughs> that was nuts. <laughs> there's a lot of wacko parts of this series. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like, I mean, I love Tyler. He is a dream. Yeah. Uh, and he has, he has good chemistry with everybody, including you. And I, I liked your whole little, you know, your romance, your story, uh, you're both, you were both kind of rocking a lot of denim in that movie. <laughs> yeah. Um, and just, I don't know, just little things like when you were setting up that thing, um, what do they call it? The trellis. Yeah, yeah, and and uh, just your little like banter's and little moments together. We were working on things, and it was cute. Uh, and um, the wedding at the end was nice, and I just like the the two of you together. So it yeah. worked. That movie truly like the behind the scenes were like we were always hanging out together. Like all six of us, Jack, Josie, Lane, like we we were all together hanging out all the time we genuinely had like such a great time. Like I remember Jack and Josie being like, this is a really good cast. Like like this, beyond people being good actors, just like good humans where there wasn't yeah. an ego in the room. It was, it was pretty cool. Like it was, um, yeah, it was really fun. Well, and it looks fun to be there at that resort and everything. Yeah, I know film it. The history of that place is really something. Um, it's just in near Harrison Hot Springs outside of Vancouver, which is like about an hour and a half. And uh, and Mike Roll, who directed it, is like truly one of my favorite directors I've ever worked with. He also, side note, did we a Web of Dreams, uh, the the movie I did, not for Hallmark. Um, but anyway, he uh, he's such a good actor, and he's really good at improv. And so he's all about like 
giving people that space to just like have fun and be. And so I think with me and Tyler, that worked really well. And, and so I think just the whole ensemble mm -hmm. worked well. Yeah. I mean, Lane Edwards, one of my favorite interviews we've ever done. Uh, we were just laughing. Our <laughs> it was so funny. Yeah, Santita, yeah she's, she's yeah. a gem. Yeah. And uh, yeah, Donna and Lane are probably, are two of definitely my top 10 interviews that I've ever done. They, are, they were both so funny yeah. and so great. Uh, <laughs> so, all right, Jax, well, what's your number three? Unleashing, Mr. Darcy. Uh, one oh, I wow, we are very oh, oh, so funny. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so of course, we all know how people feel about this series about you and Ryan Pavey together. I mean, everyone's always begging for more Mr. Darcy, so no surprise, it's pretty high on the list. This meet cute is one of my favorites when he's talking about the dog. You think he's talking about you. I love the dogs. I love your, you guys have great banter, but I just think it's so hilarious that you're so capable at what you do, yet you have all this insecurity about him looking at you as a woman. And uh, it's just, I mean, it's a great movie. Like there's a reason why everyone was, obsessed and wanting more and more you've got you and ryan have great chemistry uh the dogs are adorable and it's really funny i mean there's never gonna be a cindy busby movie in it even if it's a hardcore drama that doesn't have some element of really great humor because you're able, and there should there's i don't think anything should not have some element of humor just across any platform or medium because we can always find joy and levity and you're so good at finding that but i i really love this movie it's a lot of fun and most of the hallmark takes on pride and prejudice or jane austen in general are not my favorite um I mean, maybe i'm just too much of a purist but a lot of times it's only name only it's not even anything to do with the stories and that annoys me i don't like that mm -hmm. uh, and this is actually pretty close like it's not a perfect retelling of pride and prejudice but at least has most of the key moments and elements in it which i appreciate yeah yeah no yeah. it was also all right new of me it was the first time ryan and i ever played a lead in a hallmark movie and mm -hmm. So that was kind of both of our debuts on the network as a lead. And so I think there's something really special to that where it's like, we were like new, fresh meat mm -hmm. <laughs> to everybody. Yeah. And, and then we, and then you put like, you know, 50 dogs on a screen and then you have like a really cute story. And I just feel like, I don't know, there's just something special that will never, will, I don't think Ryan and I will ever be able to match that specific thing we created in that movie, um, no matter how great other movies we've done are. I think there's something really special about like the first. Yeah, I can see that. Well, my number three is Chasing Waterfalls. And I just uh, love, the nature of it, as I said in our uh, Christopher Russell ranking, I am an open water swimmer. I love the open water. I think it's so beautiful. I love being in the open water, even if it's freezing. <laughs> and so, and I don't know, I just like that added kind of element to a Hallmark movie of this sort of adventure. Yeah. Uh, we had another one this last uh, weekend with uh, Journey in My Heart. I think it was called, where they're also kind of looking for a uh, a special oh. place where the eagles land. Yeah. And and I, I don't know, I just like that. I think it's kind of fun. And I think it's beautiful. And I like the fact that uh, you not only bonded with him, but you also bonded with his daughter. Yeah. And so that made the separation even more like hard. Uh, and when things are, you know, there's the conflict in the film. And uh, I, I, first, I have to admit them playing 
chasing waterfalls in the trailer i was like oh no this is not great the song (laughs) yeah i'm like that song doesn't have any like it's not a romantic song like really actually at all and so like this is very tone deaf so i was skeptical going into it and then i was like this is great i actually ended up really enjoying it so there you go (laughs) (laughs) i i I just love that you say that rachel because I remember when that song first came out and knowing what the lyrics were and then making the decision however many years ago to be like, every time this comes on, I'm going to ignore what it's saying. And I've done that ever since. So when I heard it on the trailer, I was just like, but it's like, I know, but I've decided that I will never (laughs) actually confront what they're talking about in it. Like it's a jam. Don't get me wrong. I love the song, but it's just not a romantic song. For sure. Yeah. But I can I can definitely guarantee that the entire time we were shooting, that song was in my head. So it was actually like full circle when it did make it into the trailer because I was like, are you kidding me? I'm going to have this in my head for another, ah, you know? Yeah, it is a bit of an earworm. <laughs> it really is. It really yeah. is. But I was actually very surprised at how like up in arms some people were about the choice of song. Because I mean, I do understand that it's like actually like, a bit of a intense song and like yeah. can be a little bit sad um but like kind of like you Jack so I was just kind of like I'm just gonna let it be what it is and just but um but yeah it's a it's a great movie but it, it, just, it, it did set the it set the bar low and then the movie woo way over no. so it it's, like start it's, off low and then really <laughs> you know home run it <laughs> that's right <laughs> I, I definitely what I definitely have that mentality in my life that I'm like I would like to under promise and over deliver <laughs> rather than the reverse. Oh, 100 yeah, yeah, for sure. That's the way to go. <laughs> All right, Jax, what is your number two? Okay, so my number two is Royal Hearts. Oh. Uh, which this is funny because you have Rachel now. Well, well yeah. my top is your bottom, and it is. <laughs> but Royal Hearts, I mean, okay. So when you talk about the banter that you have, like, say, with like Tyler Hines or like Christopher Russell, and you can you tell that you guys just are like down to clown and have a good time on set. I felt like the dad daughter chemistry in this with James Brolin. I mean, great chemistry with your leading man, of course, but the banter, the one liners, the humor, everything about the way you guys clicked for me just made this a next level movie. It was so funny. The premise is great. I love the princess to, you know, the regular gal princess, you know, regular man to king, him wanting to have a barbecue, charming all around. And yeah, really the, the two of you together, again, talking about masterclass and acting, that's it to watch the two of you together ping pong in this movie. So yeah, I really liked it, which is why it was number two on the list. Very good. So my number two, because we'll talk about both of these. Uh, so my number two is Unleashing Mr. Darcy is my number two. And I think, like I said, this is one of the few actually good Austin-esque Hallmark movies. Most of them are not for me. And I, I appreciate that. And I feel like Ryan Pavey is just, this is Darcy, is, is his like sweet spot. Like he, he is so good at playing this kind of a a role and it's tricky because most most of the times in hallmark movies a darcy type character would be a villain would be a bad man of business and <laughs> so they have to try to kind of make him likable which is tough and they they do a good job i think in this one and uh, the great supporting cast we were talked about with tammy and with uh, uh the, you know everybody else it's it's really fun and uh the dogs are super cute so I love, I love Jane Austen. I love her, uh, her books. And so whenever they can have a fun adaptation, I'm always a fan. So that's why it's at number two for me going into the, going into hosting this podcast, this would have probably made my top 10 non Christmas Hallmark movies uh, because we started in 2017. So it was pretty fresh and uh, I, I really enjoyed it. So 
Yeah, there we go. Number two. <laughs> Exciting. Yay. All right. Well, Jax, now you can say officially what is your number one? Marrying Mr. Darcy. <laughs> oh, wow. Rachel and Jax on each end. I love it. <laughs> it's so funny that it is again why, you know, the mental gymnastics. I think I can agree with you, Rachel. All the things you didn't like were the things that made me go like, yes, which was the fact that I think that in a, in the, in the hands of a different actress and not even lots of actresses are skilled, but they come off in a certain way where they're less sweet or they are usually cast in roles where they're maybe sometimes playing the villain or, or they're, they don't have that sort of inherent sweetness that is on screen, but watching someone that does have that being like, this is my moment to get what I want really did it for me in the sense that I kind of get really into women that we haven't seen being, and I don't want to say that you were being bratty, but even if you would have been, Eric gets pushed to that, just being like, yeah, I do want it all and I want it now. And this is what's happening. And that <laughs> for me was why, for, that was a big part of the reason why this was number one for me. Also the repairing of you and Brian and the fact that any excuse to have two weddings for me while, while being over the top or a bit decadent was sort of like, yeah, why not? Give me a third also. Yeah. Like, why not? So that's kind of, that's why it ended up being my top of the list. Well, I should also add that like wedding movies in general aren't my favorite as far as Hallmark movies, just because I, maybe it's just, I feel jealous. I don't know. I haven't been married myself. And the whole idea of the whole bridezilla kind of thing really is not for me. And I just feel like, wow, you're so lucky to be able to be marrying this wonderful person. Like how, I don't know, how dare you like behave this way? And, uh, and so I wouldn't necessarily say that you were bridezilla, but like that, it's just not my favorite kind of Hallmark movie. For sure. And it's, I, you know, it's, there's so many layers to it. Like, you know, to, to, to plan a wedding and have someone's family members try to get involved and, and, you know, you've waited your whole life or whatever to get married. And now you have everyone, everybody's got an opinion. Everyone's trying to interject on what they want. And to just be like a regular girl in this high society land, it's, it's a tough thing. I mean, I wouldn't know, but I, I just can imagine that that would be so much pressure. Like we look at, you know, Meghan Markle, like to go from, you know, a quote unquote normal person to becoming a royal, it's like not an easy task. And like, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a finicky situation. And, uh, and it's also interesting, you know, between Unleashing Mr. Darcy and Ma uh, Marrying Mr. Darcy, it was two different directors as well. So I feel like that makes a big difference also. Uh, mm -hmm. Not better or worse, just makes a different vibe as well. We also could have used in Marry Mr. Darcy a scene of Darcy swimming. We got it in the first one and we didn't get it in the second one. Rachel's like that's actually my point of contention. Uh, you get in the lead there. Okay, I agree with you. We could have used that. I can't believe they actually kept that scene. To be honest, like yeah. it was like that. Very well, well, like Hallmark, and yeah. it was also like what was it November when we shot Unleashing Mr. Darcy? So like it was freezing. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. also, my favorite part about that scene is we're all wearing like turtlenecks and he's like swimming i'm like yeah. that's definitely heated although it's not steaming so that's interesting yeah and him <laughs> with those trunks i mean come on yeah they did not go for uh boxers i'll tell you that much they didn't go for the big swimsuit on that one more please <laughs> oh and, and not to get away from from this part of the conversation but i do have to also give a shout out to tammy gillis and I think Tammy and Donna, it's like the Busby's besties that it's yeah. like, I just want to see you. Cindy, you do have this thing where people work with you 
And then they get obsessed with wanting to work with you again. And it, it just gets to happen. Like that's what's yeah. cool too. Yeah. It's like everyone that comes into contact with you wants to be in another movie with you. And a lot of times it actually works out that it happens that way. And that's nice for all of us. Cause we I mean the feeling is cool. <laughs> the feeling you know what would be, is cool. You know what would be so fun if they did like a girlfriend's guide to Christmas and you had you and you could you could do four you could have you andrew brooks tammy gillis and donna that would be so fun Mm, yes i like that i know i was i was thinking of like if there was more of a like still romantic but if there was like kind of like a a girl gang vibe to one Mm -hmm. of the movies and then they like maybe they meet one girl is like the single girl and she meets a guy and it becomes a thing like that could be really fun because I feel like a lot of people are like oh like do you know you know Lacey Chabert or Candace Cameron or whatever and I'm like not really like I met her at the parties but we're never going to work together because we're like in that same so I'm like that would be the best opportunity and then we'll add Donna Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. Tammy and you know whoever Nelson Wong. <laughs> Who should be in everything? Let's all be clear. <laughs> always. He's never, he's never going to take away. He's always going to be a value add. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Totally>. So <laughs> Hallmark, if you're listening, you can use that, that idea free of yeah. charge. <laughs> maybe, maybe let me come be on set one day. That would yes. be fun. <laughs> Live podcasting on set. That's fun. Yes. We're ready. We're ready to do it. All, All right. right. So what's your number one? My number one is Royal Hearts. And I really like this movie. It was during the like deluge of royal movies that year uh, because of the royal wedding. And so we had seen so many, but I think this was my favorite of the ones that we got. Uh, I like the fact that in this movie, the, as opposed to some of the royal movies where your where the characters are like poor and then they're brought over and yeah. so they're like the odd woman out right be with the royals in this case it was different because you were the royal and it was the men that were courting you right as opposed <laughs> to as opposed to the other way around yeah. so i so i kind of liked that dynamic was fun and then also i mean james brolin like <laughs> I loved him in this movie. He was so funny. It was like, get that man, his dog. <laughs> and Andrew Cooper is a dream. I love him. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I just, I liked it. I also think, because sometimes these royal movies, the dresses, not good enough. Mm. And they're a little, they look a little crummy to me. Crabby. And in this, <laughs> the dress was legit. It was beautiful. Yeah. So that's why it got number one. Yes. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Those dresses were all, um, well, the red one and the black one, which you didn't fully see because it was like the dinner sequence, but it was like an Audrey Hepburn style dress. It was so stunning. Both those dresses were made, literally handmade for me for that movie, um, which was like, and I remember, uh, brad cravoy like the producer of it he was like you should keep the dresses and i'm like brad what am i gonna do with these dresses and and at the time i was going to vacation in europe after because i was like i'm already in europe might as well like go on vacation so i was like i'm not gonna go to the south of france with like a red ball gown (laughs) in my suitcase (laughs) as i'm like in an old like european hotel like going upstairs Um, but now that i think about it uh-huh. you like, should have kept it you could you could have like an epic cosplay go to like a con or something <laughs> well i was thinking more of putting them up for auction for uh charity but yes that's, oh, great- that's good too <laughs> um yeah. so i will say my can i say what my number one would be yes please okay so my number one but i will say preface by saying that my number two is like really, really close to the number one, Um, like really close. Um, But number one for me is Royal Hearts as well. Mm -hmm. Like that's my number one. Um, And then Chasing Waterfalls is my close second. Uh, I know, 
Oh. We have pretty close lists. Yeah, we do. Uh, yeah. Royal Hearts, because first of all, it's the movie that brought me to Europe for the first time ever. And so it was, and I got to shoot in Romania and I got to like James Brolin, like you guys talked so highly of him and I cannot speak more highly of him. Like he's in the same boat as Francis, Francis, Francis Fisher. Like they're in like the awesome boat and I'm just trying to like get on the awesome boat. <laughs> And I'm just like, please, please. Um, they're just like, first of all, they're like Hollywood legends. Second of all, yeah. they're hilarious. Third of all, they're super down to earth. And like, I just had the best time with James. He like, you know, even year, like a year or two later would like send me an email being like, oh, we, I miss our gang and all this kind of stuff. I'm like, James Brolin emailed me? Like, this is so exciting. Um, but yeah, he's, he's such a, He's just amazing and, uh, you know, I just, yeah, I had the best time and, and that is probably, I've always had an amazing time with my, my cast and crew, but the cast from that movie, like on weekends, we hung out all day, every day. We went to Transylvania together, which most people know I'm obsessed with vampires. So like going to Dracula's like castle yeah. was like a dream come true. And they all like were so pumped for me that I was gonna like have a dream come true and they could be a part of it. And like, you know, we just, we whined and dined together. It was just, and British people are like, can we just talk about how amazing and funny they are? They're just so, anyway, I could talk about that movie yeah. all day, but it was amazing. And that sheep scene was so funny. Like we genuinely had like a sheep herder and like a dog like herding sheep to like the street. And we were like trying to drive and they'd be like, ah, ah, and we had to like ADR the whole scene. It was just so funny. Um, anyway, I'm just really yeah. grateful for that opportunity and uh, Chasing Waterfalls. You know what it is about those two movies is they both feel like really big movies. Like they don't feel like a typical whatever that means. And that's not a negative thing. It's just different. It doesn't feel like you're typical Hallmark movie where it just feels really big and different and outdoors and like just the quality of them is like on another level I feel mm -hmm. yeah I can agree I think that they are really fun and uh and there's an escapist quality to both of them which I think we all need more of yeah mm -hmm. no yeah. yeah. had so many responses on Twitter uh, but, uh, we even had some in different languages. Uh, oh, so, <laughs> uh, Rodney Smith says, let me think about it. And then uses the thoughtful emoji. All of them that Cindy is in are fantastic. Okay. Very cute. Uh, Suzanne Benjamin says my favorite movie with Cindy in, was in is chasing waterfalls, spectacular waterfalls and magnificent acting with Christopher Russell. Uh, then Deanna says, unleash Mr. Darcy, marry Mr. Darcy and wedding March five. Mm. Uh, uh, Velma says autumn stables. We got a lot of autumn stables and a I, real, I, real favorite. I got to yeah. say, and it was on Hallmark movies now. So it's not technically a Hallmark yeah. movie, but it did make it. And yeah. And I mean, who doesn't love Kevin McGarry? I, I mean, mean, we could talk about him all day for goodness sake. Agreed. The bluest <laughs> eyes in the world ever. <laughs> All right. Uh, Susan on a journey says, oh man, that's a tough one. Now I haven't seen them all yet, but I'm going to have to go with a Godwink Christmas spent for love. It's such an awesome movie. And Cindy Busby is so good in that one. Uh, Jenny Raz Rosenberry says the Godwink movie and Autumn Stables with Kevin McGarry. Uh, Barbara Ann says Royal Hearts with James Broland and Love is in the Forecast. Uh, Bob Brad says the one with the air balloons in Lake Tahoe. So that one we didn't include, but hey. Yeah. There you go. I think love this in the is air. Love in the air. Yeah, I think that was what called. Yeah. yeah. Love in the air tor with Torrance Coombs. Yeah, that was fun. Lake Tahoe. And we shot that in Utah as well. Mm, yeah. Uh, Cindy, That's another Dr. actor that you, you like, you talk to Torrance Coombs and he won't shut up about you. Like, oh. in a good way. In a good way. Like, yeah, no, he's he's a gem and we, you know, we did Heartland together way back when. Yeah. And so he's, yeah, he's amazing. Yes. Uh, so Cindy Daphne says, oh, there are so many, the Mr. Darcy movies, and I'm hoping for a third. <laughs> She's uh, the only one. <laughs> <laughs> Our friend Cammie Clements, she says Royal Hearts or Godwin Christmas. 
Uh, Regina Cox says, wedding in March, my boyfriend's back with Tyler Hines, cracks me up when he's trying to read the wet blurred notice that uh, that they threw, that they blew in the water. Oh, the lemon, the, the apologize scene. Yeah. The whole <laughs> storyline is great. Turning back, uh, broken hearts back to love. So, very cute. so a little bit of everything. Yeah. You know, uh, so, from the Twitter. <laughs> I'm so, honestly, I have to say, I'm still so, I know this sounds like maybe weird to say, but I'm still so amazed that people even like, that I even like am a part of something that people watch. Like I truly like don't even, sometimes I feel like I, I don't even grasp that. And so it's really it's really amazing for me to hear that people like even enjoy anything. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm so like, I'm just still like in a bubble about it. I'm like, wait, I make things, I make movies, which is really fun. And then people actually watch them. Oh, cool. Like, it's just, it's, yeah. I'm just in awe of it. It's, it's amazing. And I, I'm like forever grateful. This is something that I have managed to do and wanted to do and here here we are and I get to talk to two amazing women about it so thank you so much for allowing me to do that well thank you what do you think overall of our rankings I love them? it I think I think you both of you brought up some really valid points um I don't feel uh like you you know didn't like one of my movies I think this is all a very positive environment <laughs> and uh yeah, I think that there's beautiful things about all the movies and, you know, there's always things that can be maybe a little bit better or thought out more or could have been different, but, you know, we're making movies in three weeks, man. Like we're, we're doing the best we can and, and they turn out really well and people work really hard at making it happen. And, mm -hmm. and most of all, it's a beautiful formula to make people feel good. And, and, and so, yeah, I, I, I think this is great. And you guys both brought up really mm -hmm. valid points that I, I'm like, I'm gonna probably be thinking about it, doing mental gymnastics for the rest of the day. <laughs> and you, you wanna share your social media with us? With yeah, I'm um, on Instagram and Twitter. It's Cindy underscore Busby. Um, I'm primarily more active on Instagram, but uh, yeah, um, you can hit me up there and I'll be sure to share you know, any news I have um, when I have it. Well, let us know if you're listening, what you think and how you would rank these seven movies. I'll put all seven in the description and uh, we would love to see your rankings because everyone's rankings clearly as Jackson and I showed our rankings are very different and there's no wrong ranking when it comes to I can't to wait to see things. as well. Yeah, it'll be really fun. So Jax, how can people find you? Um, people can find me on Instagram at Jacqueline Collier and on Twitter at Jacqueline C Tweets. Great. And you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. So please check that out. And also make sure that uh, you're following the podcast at Home Rookies Pod and Home Rookies Podcast, all of our social media. And if you are listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. We really appreciate that. And if you are watching on YouTube, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. We appreciate that so, so much. We also have our patron group, which we have really fun watch alongs and other activities and Facebook, the Facebook patron group. So please, please sign up. It's only $2 a month and it means so much to us. We're so grateful. So check that out. Also, we have our merch store, which has tons of fun Hallmark inspired merch. So please take a look at that as well. We're gonna have some fun, festive new designs coming up uh, for the holidays. So take a look down there. And uh, thanks so much, Jax, for doing this. And thanks so much to Cindy. And we'll talk to y'all later. Bye, everyone. Thanks, Rachel. Bye, everybody. <laughs>